Okay, welcome back to theCUBE stage here in Cloud City, Telco DR, Telco Digital Revolution. We had a chance to talk to Rob Haberman, CTO of Nokia Software. Great interview as part of our hybrid program here, but we're still on the floor, on, on site. Let's go listen to my great interview with Ron and what he had to say about the power of the cloud. And welcome to theCUBE's coverage of Mobile World Congress 2021. It's an in-person and hybrid event. And we're here in Palo Alto with a remote interview as part of the hybrid, getting as much content as possible. Is a great guest, Ron Haberman, who's the CTO of Nokia Cloud Network Services, known as CNS. Uh, Ron's an expert, he's going to come in and share with us his vision and his commentary on openness in the cloud, telco cloud, the changes at the edge, so much going on, so much innovation that's changing the game that's going to impact lives and society. Ron, thank you for coming on theCUBE for this Mobile World Congress special segment. Thank you, glad to be here. So the, the transformation in the cloud is so amazing with 5G, you got cloud native developers, you got enterprises changing their architectures uh, and cloud service probably going to the next level. 5G certainly is a great edge, but the, the strength of the cloud combined with the new modern applications really is going to be the, the power. And you start to see people starting to think differently around how developers are building apps and how companies are working together. It's not just one company ruling the world anymore. It's a lot of interoperability, interconnections, um, a lot of APIs, <laughs> openness. Kind of sounds like uh, a network. It sounds like a network effect. This is a big deal. What's your, what's your take on this whole shift as 5G gets enabling a fast edge and cloud native go hand in hand? What's your take? Yeah, I, I think 5G and the transformation to cloud native, you know, generically speaking, go very nicely hand in hand. Uh, it's important to understand that you know 5G is not just another G, really, because it, it's more intended for consumption by uh, businesses and, and not just consumer. And what it means is that uh, it would have you know a vast impact on on how development is done, how the deployment is done, and the type of you know features that would be required from uh, from the network. So when, when we went you know, on, on our path to start developing you know, for cloud native, primarily you know, for 5G, it, it went beyond just being cloud ready. And we started looking at how do we expand the operability with uh, the ecosystems? You know, how do we go into topics such as continuous delivery? How do we create collaboration between CSPs uh, and cloud providers such that we can you know, provide the advancements. Now, th there are quite a few you know, subtopics in, in the transformation. For example, it might be obvious, but without automation, there's really no, no, no ability to create a cloud native delivery process. If you're on the cloud, uh, you, you're creating speed and ability to innovate as well as access but you also are now required to create a better security system and ways to tie things you know, back together. Uh, the multi-vendor environment and the path that it would enable to move to an as a service model uh, is again a topic that you know, can really be established as part of this transition to cloud native and had, had been you know, greatly in focus for us. Uh, and finally, that there is, you know, a, a bit of a, of a balancing act uh, in some of the use cases uh, in how do we use, you know, new technologies such as machine learning uh, in creating new new use cases. Um, for, for Nokia, is a supplier of both the, the network functions, which are now getting distributed uh, into public cloud, in the private cloud, and on the edges as well as you know, control systems of different types, the OSS, BSS, including you know, charging, enablement of IoT, et cetera, et cetera. It, it's really about how do we bring these things together in a way that creates uh, use cases that, that the service providers can position, especially in their uh, now quest to go after B2B in leveraging their network. Yeah, and, and, and you guys bring huge strength there on the Nokia side. I want to ask you specifically, as CSPs are collaborating with you guys to leverage that strength of cloud native and open, the question comes up is, how fast can they get to a modern, agile 
open infrastructure and how fast can they enable value? And that's, that's where the whole, this whole interoperability thing or this interplay between cloud native and innovation comes together. Can you take us through um, how you see that, how, how, how cloud service providers are approaching cloud native today? Because that's really kind of where the focus is. How do I get the operating value, okay, with the speed and agility of development and obviously built in all the security and everything else. That seems to be the uh, disruptor. And, and, in, let, and face it, it's been a slow world in, in the telco place. So, so cloud has been a speed game with value, but it's an operator game too. <laughs> What's your thoughts? That, that's right. And look, uh, I'll take you maybe just a little bit into, into the history of, of this transition. Because only just a few years ago, mo most networks were really built purely with what we're now referring to as, as PNS, physical network functions, really uh, equipment that was installed in uh, certain you know, pop locations and created uh, the network. Uh, we started this you know, transition uh, to virtualization uh, in the world of VNFs and then cloud ready and now cloud native. And it's been a few years uh, for these things to, to come together. Uh, and, and maybe the, the most important thing that we, we must get right uh, is that as we disaggregate and in a way you know, complicate the, the deployment, if you would, uh, by, 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 some, by a few factors, we want to give the tools to indeed go fast because the, the name of the game in, in moving to cloud native is to speed up innovation. So, what we've been doing and in collaboration now with, uh, with Google is on the one hand, we need to make sure that all of the network functions, the operating uh, models uh, work in a disaggregated cloud. They can go all the way from a private data center through the edge into the, the central data center. Then on you know, the Nokia side, we, we have to bring the capabilities to tie networks together uh, be able to migrate workloads uh, between the locations. Uh, and maybe most importantly is as we release you know, new versions of our software, as we enable new capabilities, we want to put it in the hands of, of the service providers and in turn the, the developers right away. So we need to enable you know, true continuous delivery in, in the sense that you know, it's very familiar in the, in the cloud world, uh, but quite new to, you know, to telco. You know, so we have. Go ahead, yeah, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry to interrupt. Continue. Maybe just to, you know to, to give a, a very practical example of, of a customer uh, that that we share uh, in Europe, Telenet, which is starting with an on-premise Antos-based type of, of deployment, but keeping an eye on you know moving to the edge and into the broader cloud, really enabling themselves to be in in a multi-region and with true northbound open interfaces for new use cases to be implemented. Yeah, Ron, I want to get your thoughts on this. Dave Vellante, my co-host and I have been, were talking just in an earlier segment around how major inflection points have some characteristics. Uh, they all kind of have characteristics in common. Usually it's proprietary to open shifts happen. And one in point we were looking at was like the 90s, right? The late 80s, early 90s, when uh, you had proprietary networking protocol stacks. And then OSI stack came out. Obviously we know what happened from there. TCP IP created the, the best, biggest wave of innovation uh, in the computer history uh, we've seen. Similar things kind of happen here. You know, I won't say proprietary per se, but like there are, you know, there are 5G and telco stuff that's kind of like operator centric uh, legacy. Uh, you start to see this openness kind of come back and I'm not going to say a full stack, but new kinds of disruption. And 5G is opening up the door because it's not just consumer technology. A lot of people like the CEO of Intel is saying this is a business technology, commercial technology more than consumer uh, because of the characteristics. And you combine that with cloud native and say openness with, with scale with cloud service providers. You mentioned Google, that's a public cloud. You know? And so you, public cloud is going to be a disruption but because it brings scale. So it reminds me of this inflection point where you have this new uh, shift and you mentioned networks these networks are connecting. So you got a public cloud and Google's known for their networks and their cloud as being highly scalable and secure. But there's also, right. they're not the only network in town. You got a 5G and you got backhaul, you got all kinds of new heterogeneous environments. What's your 
comment on that because this is what people are talking about. Where's the shift going to go? What wave is this? What's this going to look like? Is, it, is this a true disruption or is it more than the same? What's your thoughts? So I think it's a true disruption. Uh, one of the biggest parts of 5G that you know, would enable these new use cases is slicing. Now, slicing is, is, is a big word, describing something that you know, most of us in, in networks know for quite some time. It's the, the, really the ability to create some kind uh, of a piece of the network that is shared uh, between partners for a particular purpose with a particular SLA uh, that contains you know, bandwidth in latency requirements, locations, et cetera, et cetera. Now, the, the, the ultimate goal is for an enterprise to be able to interface with the public cloud and with their operator and consume resources completely dynamically. Now, you, you talk about you know, Google and, and public cloud and obviously anybody that used GCP knows that you know, at any point in time, you can go into a, a region, you can uh, reserve uh, what you need uh, use what you need, uh, create results, and then either keep it, move away, open you know new locations, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. One thing is missing: the connectivity uh, over the, the mobile air interface uh, to your user. Uh, and slicing allows us to combine the power of the true cloud with the ability to dynamically and programmatically you know, create a slice for a particular purpose. And for, for us, the, the ultimate goal is that really, you know, networks would become programmable and a, a developer or their user would be able to interface with a system and literally create network in code. Now there's going to be quite a lot of uh, building blocks required, you know, to reach that goal, given that today, most of it is, is static. But it starts with at least being able to orchestrate resources out of the network, tie them into termination point that by themselves are NFs that are cloud native and potentially even running in uh, the, the true public cloud, and then attach them into a use case. Now, you also mentioned openness, and you know, Nokia had been you know, on this open path you know, for quite some time in creating choice for our customers. But now with you know, the Google coming in with GCP, for example, the interface that we create with technologies such as Apigee enable openness, not just for our customer being the CSP, but also for the developer to come in from the outside and reside within the ecosystem that they chose and still be able to consume and, and even create uh, services dynamically, and we enable it with products that interface with that on the on the other side, which we can get in. Yeah, what's interesting, what you're saying is, is interesting, I'll just call it out because I think it's important. We hear this all the time is that with the edge and the devices, people are managing an end-to-end -end workflow from an application standpoint. But that's very mm -hmm. difficult when you don't have networks that are being managed as a heterogeneous <laughs> environment. So that's a key point you made. So the question I have for you is, how can operators, best manage this wave because this is the this is the holy grail you're talking about here we're talking about end to end visibility into the workflow as a developer you know with the shift left security being built in that sure. no one's debating that everyone knows that right so as an operator how do I, what's what's the what's the built how do I how do I starting today operate and manage through this cuz i got to operate a large network um, it's almost like the you know swapping the engine out at 30,000 feet in the airplane so how should operators think about taking this step? So the, the, the first thing to do is to really just accept the fact that th there is going to be true legacy and th there are plenty of 3G networks today still operating around the world. There's going to be, you know, to, to what is now starting to look like semi-legacy. So VNFs that have only been, you know, delivered to, to networks maybe in the past you know, couple of years and we'll carry 4G traffic and we'll stay in production for quite some time and, and manage this transition between uh, PNS, uh, VMs running VNS, 
VMs running containerized workloads and true cloud native, which may be bare metal. And you know, as we're working with, with Google on, on Antos, it, it, it literally enables this transition by creating a, a position for us to put the workload in, in each step of the path, as well as in multiple locations around the network. And what you know, what Nokia brings into this equation is also a unified view for the operator. So if, if you're an operator that today runs, you know, on VMs on-prem, you know, you have some workflows defined and you've been uh, running them in, in a certain way, we, we want to keep that view as similar as, as possible with the tooling that you uh, were enabled to use uh, over the past few years, but create extensions that connects us into a containerized workflow and then a true uh, cloudified workflow out of the, the same environment. Uh, and this is actually in part what we've been, you know, collaborating about with some CSPs as well as with, with Google on enabling. Ron Haberman, CTO, Nokia Cloud Network Services Group. Thank you so much for that insight. Great commentary. Thank you for sharing your perspective on the future of, of Telco, Telco Cloud, Telco Edge unifying those networks end to end. Great stuff, thank you for coming on theCUBE. Thank you. Okay, this is CUBE's coverage of Mobile World Congress 2021. We're in person and we're virtual, it's a hybrid event. Thanks for watching. John, clearly the power of the public cloud in that interview, great job by the way. It was great to get Nokia in there, you can hear, you hear the, the operator impact and that's awesome, more to come. So back to the studio, Adam and the team back at the studio.